Hey, Art2 Advanced Studio kids. So today we're going to start looking at our next project, which is the Agama Graph. Um, if you haven't heard of it before, that's okay. We're about to figure out what it's all about, how to make it, and um, all the scary insights as to how it's created, but how cool the outcome can be. So uh, let's go ahead and stay tuned and figure out what you're going to make for your Agama Graph. So what is an Agama Graph? Agama graphs are named after the artist Yaakov Agam, known for his kinetic paintings, kinetic meaning movement. Instead of just being stationary on a wall, the paintings either move on their own or the imagery and design is changed as you view it from different angles. Agama graphs are an adopted form of these works. They can be made with simple materials to simulate the effect that Agam achieved in his pieces. What will you be doing? You will be creating an 8x10 agama graph with two images that change. For the prompts of the subject matter, think of two images that change, transform, are opposites, etc. You don't want to pick two random things or two images that have no relationship to each other. Additionally, ensuring that the two images have similar shapes will help to further the visual transformation effect. A lot of the measuring will already be done for you by me, the teacher, since we don't have as much studio time. In normal years, you would be expected to uh, do all the measuring, but I've got you. So step by step, this was created by our amazing Miss Flanagan. Um, you're gonna choose two images. So she decided to do two people and she's gonna be showing them how they physically change over time. She sketched the first image so she get an idea of what types of shapes she would need to do the second image in order to transform and make sure it makes visual sense. Before you start, make sure that on the back of the papers, the numbers and letters are on the bottom. I have measured everything out for you, but it's important for later that you have everything lined up. So it's really important to make sure everything's labeled uh, now and you don't wait till later. You can hold the second paper on top of the first, so like to a window or a light table, and then block out the same edges of the major shapes. So again, she's showing the transformation between someone young versus someone old, and she wants to make sure that the shape of the head or how big the images are are similar to the first and second pieces of paper that she'll be using. So you can kind of see towards the top right here, these little markings are giving her an idea of how big the heads are with the little um, markings of like where the nose and mouth are as well. So here's a rough line work of both images. Um, it looks like the top one is smaller only because of the camera angle, but in actuality, they're both the same size. So again, you're kind of seeing how you're gonna be creating two images that are eventually going to be transforming one into another. So she chose to trace with Sharpie and then erase all the extra pencil lines. Um, note that you will have some choices on media. She chose Sharpie and colored pencil. Um, you can also choose paint or other materials, but I would actually probably stick with Sharpie or colored pencils or dry media. Um, 
And you're gonna see why in a minute because you wanna make sure the paper stays as flat as possible. And as you guys know, when you add paint to paper, it can buckle and then it's more difficult to um, adhere to paper later on. All right, how awesome is Flanagan, right? Like this is what she does on her spare time. She's so talented. So she's colored both of the men. Um, she decided to put the older picture, um, like the older people in new color, like more realistic colors, while as she made the younger people in more of a sepia tone to give the illusion of like an old time picture. So this is when you're actually gonna go ahead and start um, figuring out and getting your materials ready to put the whole thing together. You're gonna hold the ruler up to each line and then drag your bone folder, you can see it in her right hand, so that you're actually putting a good amount of pressure on it. It's gonna help create creases when you're folding. Um, bone folders are really important if you've done bookmaking or other types of crafts where you wanna make sure you have a nice crisp fold you need to make sure to use a bone folder. So that's what she's showing here. Ta-da! Fan folds, so you have the zigzag. And notice how everything is labeled before she started doing that. Flatten the zigzag out a little bit so it's easier for you to work on as you're starting to assemble. All right, this is the scary part, people. You are going to be cutting those original images. So back here, yes. On the back side of these paper, um, are already the lines and the labels, 1A, 1B, etc. cetera, um, you have to go ahead and cut. You have to try really, really hard to cut right on the lines. Um, the cuts need to be neat and straight. Uh, please do not rush this step um, because how they're cut and the craftsmanship involved is really important in order to make sure the agamograph actually looks how you want it to look. You're then going to match up the strips to the base and glue down with a glue stick. For each of the strips, it has a label on the back, A1, B1, A2, B2, and then you line it up with your um, accordion folded piece of paper. Notice how A and then B a, B, and then the numbers are also numeric. Um, you wanna make sure the strips aren't upside down or mixed up, so it's really important to stay organized while you're putting together your gamograph. So here is everything glued down. And as you can see, it's really nicely flatly glued. There's nothing um, popping up. There's no edges popping up. And I th really think the reason why she was able to do this so neatly is because the paper was flat. When you are using other materials that may um, make the paper kind of flip up or warp, it's more difficult to create the agamograph. So I would strongly recommend colored pencil, marky, marker, <laughs> marker, sharpie, things like that, um, instead of maybe a water-based material. Refold, press as needed, and then you're going to glue it down to construction paper. You can do this with a thin line of Elmer's glue or with hot glue, and try to make sure the points are evenly spaced when you're gluing them so that you know, you don't have any high, higher accordion areas and lower accordion areas. You want everything to be as um, even as possible. You're gonna walk around your completed gomograph to see the effect. All right, so what am I looking for? Uh, I'm looking for two images that connect to one another in some way, good development of your chosen media, careful folding, cutting, and gluing, as in craftsmanship, and good effort and use of class time. Our timeline for this project, today is day one, so this was the intro. You're choosing your subject matter and beginning to draw. Day two is continue drawing, applying color media, developing that media on days three and four, and then day five, you're gonna be cutting, assembling, and handing in this assignment to Google Classroom by taking a picture, maybe even a video, um, and then also filling out the Google Form self-assessment and reflection.